Hey, what's up? What's going on? It's your girl, Mary Jane. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Please like the video. Please share the video. It'll be greatly appreciated from the bottom of my heart. My peeps, my peoples, I would appreciate it. So let's get into it. We're going to be talking about Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, season six, episode 12. So let's get into it. We leave off with Jocelyn, Melissa, and Dime, and Carly Red arguing, calling each other's names, and and you know, Carly Red is all in her feelings. She's yelling, she's screaming, she's doing a a nice performance. Jocelyn is feeling kind of bad, like okay, let me just let me just make up with this bitch, basically. So basically, then what what do you get? So you get Carly Red. She goes back inside. She talks to Jocelyn. They mend wounds. You know, they're friends again. They apologize to each other. Jocelyn tells Carly Red, hey, listen, that envelope I said I had last year to blackmail you, there was nothing in it. It was empty. I just wanted to pull your cord and make you stop talking shit, basically. So anyways, and so, you know, Carly's like, you know, you, you're the only person that can do this to me, the only person that can hurt me so deeply and so profound because, you know, you're the underdog and I feel like I'm the underdog too. So I just be rooting for both of us to make it. So anyways, they hug each other, they hug it out, boom, it's all good. Melissa did a good job. She got Jocelyn and Carly Red back together. Let's see how long this lasts before some other bullshit comes up. It almost seems like they made up so Carly Red can get back in Jocelyn's business and carry the bone around. So anyways, then you get um, Stevie J. He meets up with Kurt. And basically, they're talking. And Stevie is meeting up. Stevie is meeting up with Kurt to let him know, like, yo, you need to do something about this paternity test. You know, you just can't, like, you just can't just leave it like this. So Stevie asks, you know, um, Kurt, is the baby yours? And Kurt replies, I'm praying that it's not mine. And then Stevie J says, prayer don't work that way. Praying, prayer ain't going to help in that way because it ain't going to help. And so, um, Kurt is just like, I just hope it's not mine. You know what I mean? And Stevie is just like, you can't, you just can't keep waiting. You have to do something because time is going to persist and go on. You need to take the test basically and so then you know Curtis and his confessional he was like I wish everybody would mind their fucking business I wish how about everybody mind their business and stay out of my business how about everybody else worry about their own motherfucking life instead of being my business basically Kurt's not feeling it he wants people to stay out of his business but people are going to continue to be in your business and so you know Stevie J lets Kurt know that you know you didn't go to um what's his name Scrappy's um bachelor party or whatever your mom was there Rashida was there you know your mom you know gave me Stevie said she gave me she gave you know um Scrappy a DNA test for you to take and so Kurt was like I had a feeling it's gonna be some bullshit I'm so glad I didn't go so Kurt um intuition works <laughs> so maybe his intuition is working that this baby's not his we'll see but we also heard that there's another woman out there claiming that she's pregnant by Kurt We'll see. And so then we get Tammy, Rashida, Mimi. They meet up. They're drinking or whatever, having a good time. And basically, you know, um, they start to talk about the situation between Melissa and um, Mimi. And basically, um, you know, Tammy is like, so what's going on with you? And, you know, Melissa, because Quali is telling us that you guys had gotten into some tiff and all this other stuff. And this, um, um, bullshit with Adrian and all this other stuff. So basically, you know, Mimi's like, it's all good. I'm not trying to talk to, you know, Melissa because she's playing both sides. She's playing the fence. And basically, let me just tell you girls, yes, I did have a brief relationship with uh, Melissa. But when I, when it comes to, when it, when it came to a head, um, I found out that, you know, she, this little um, business that she has going on with Jocelyn is way more deeper than what I was led to believe. So, you know, Mimi's like, it's all good. And so, you know, um, Tammy's talking about, you know, her going to Jamaica. She's talking about her fashion. Her swimsuit line is going to be coming out. She wants them to go to Jamaica. She wants to make sure that Melissa and, you know, um, Mimi make up and everything because she want both of these girls at her party and she want them at the swim shoot showing of her bathing suits and she wants them to both to go to Jamaica and she wants it to be fixed you know and so you know so then um Tammy and Rashida was like but you know what something interesting we met a new friend her name is um 
the Panamanian princess, or uh, the Panama princess, um, Estella, and she, and we invited her to come out. And then so, you know, Mimi's all happy. Mimi was like, she's young, she's pretty, she's sexy, and she's Latin. And she's signed to Stevie, and she's going to be working with Stevie. And she goes, I'm so happy. Mimi is so happy that this is going on because now Jocelyn is the baby's mother. And now this some young, talented, beautiful, well, young, talented, beautiful woman is showing up in Stevie's life. And is going to interfere, which is the same thing that happened to Mimi. So Mimi is like karma's a bitch. She's happy. She's in all her glory. And she's just, ah. Oh. So then, you know, the Panamanian Estella, she meets up with the girls. And she's having conversations with them. And her and Mimi hits it off. Mimi's telling her, you know, um... Here's my phone number. Call me. Keep in touch with me. Let me just tell you the real what's going on. Well, you know, so Estella is like, I'm the only, you know, Latin artist that is working with Stevie or whatever. And it's all good. And so uh, Mimi's like, hold up. No, you ain't. Um, Jocelyn is signed to his new baby's mama. What are you talking about? And, and you know, Mimi was like, well, you need to have an eye-to-eye -eye conversation, a uh, real conversation with Stevie to find out because, you know, his baby mama be messing up all his business and his music, so you don't want to be a part of that. And so, you know, Jocelyn, Tammy are asking her, like, so you came here by yourself, who you living with, Blase and the third, all up in the bitch's business. So Estella is like, yeah, I was staying with Stevie for a while, and, you know, his baby mother was living there. There, but I didn't see her, you know, because, you know, we had different schedules or whatever. So Mimi was like, okay, I see, I see. So Mimi is getting all the tea. She's she's living it for us. She's happy because she feels there's going to be some drama coming towards Jocelyn. And she's ready for it to come. And these women are engaging in this conversation. And basically trying to get the information. Because none of the women at the table like Jocelyn. You know, Rashida doesn't like Jocelyn. Tammy doesn't like Jocelyn. And so do Mimi does not like Jocelyn. And they have, they have valid reasons not to like her. So, but... When all this is said and done at the reunion, I hope you ladies are going to be ready or be ready when Jocelyn has a counterattack. Just be ready. It's three y'all against one. So get your, get your game up, get your army up, get your money up, you know, because it's going to be some, it's going to be something. So anyways, so that's all good. And so, you know. Mimi's in her glory because she was like, payback is a bitch, motherfucker. And she's in her confessional with her breasts. What's up with Mimi's breasts? They don't look real. She looks like she's from the Fretstones or something. Like like somebody drew, drew them breasts on her. Like a bad artist or something drew it on her. It just looks horrific. It looks horrible. So anyways... Um, so, you know, Tammy's inviting everybody to her swimsuit line to, you know, try on the outfits to get fitted because they got nice bodies, especially Estella. So we'll, so we'll get there. So then we get Dime. She's walking through the park with her boyfriend named Sean or Shane, whatever the fuck his name is. He is a basketball player. She's been knowing him for 10 years and he's friends with Waka Flocka and, and Tammy. And basically, you know, um, Dime brings up that, you know, that she wants to be going to she wants to go to Jamaica and all this other good stuff but she knows um Tammy's gonna be there and she don't know how it's gonna be so basically her boyfriend is telling her to make up with Tammy because you know their family shouldn't have went down that way you should second think this blah 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 zay, zay. so you know Diamond said yes you know what I'm gonna be a bigger person I'm gonna try to mend fences with her if I can mend fences with Jocelyn I can mend fences with Tammy and you know Diamond looks beautiful she looks gorgeous absolutely drop dead gorgeous girlfriend you look good and your man look good too <laughs> so it is what it is and so then you know we get we get up with stevie and mimi and everything and so stevie shows up to mimi's house maybe mimi is um in a house with her daughter Eva. Eva's learning Spanish and all that good stuff. That's a good thing. That's a good look. Mimi house looks nice. It looks beautiful. She got beautiful like these um blue chairs or turquoise darkish mix 
mix blue chairs look nice they're leather they're beautiful Stevie walks in looking good as ever and so basically they're gonna break the news to Eva to let Eva know that she has a big sister so they let Eva know that she has a big sister Eva's happy that she has a big sister and she still wants to always be um, Stevie's little princess and the baby as well she's gonna teach her new sister how to make bread get that bread she tries on her father's hat her father's sunglasses and does his face facial expressions which look wonderful and beautiful and then so you know Jocelyn throws up to Stevie face that you know she met up with Estella and all that good stuff and she was like I heard that you were shacking back up with <laughs> with, with Jocelyn or whatever and then so Stevie was like nah we not shocking up it's not like that Stevie was like damn no matter where I go this woman Mimi is gonna find out my business just like you find out her business and so Stevie's like I don't know if I'm too happy with Estella hanging out with the gossip girls of Atlanta I thought that shit was a cute that was a cute line or whatever so it is what it is and so then you know Jocelyn's hosting a rail she's driving out to the rail looking glamorous looking beautiful um, she gets on the show she starts to ragging on you know Kurt and Rashida she couldn't wait to get them and basically that was the topic of discussion that was was popping in the media and basically she's gonna talk about it she don't have no loyalty to Rashida or Kurt at all so she's gonna do what she's gonna do so it is what it is and Jocelyn had her finger waves looking all finger <laughs> finger wavish out I was like yo so anyways then we get to we get to um Tammy's swimsuit department basement shack somewhere and these ladies was we only seen one fucking swimsuit it was orange ugly tacky terrible you know don't be making just go to the bar and eat go to the restaurant and eat don't like if you you know what Tammy Fake it until you make it. Get a real designer to design the bathing suits. Show them to us on TV. And then once you get people buying them and they're blowing up like hotcakes, then you start crafting your new your, your new design or whatever. But don't show us some shitty orangey bathing suit and thinking just because a girl got a good body, it made the baby suit. No. The bathing suit looked terrible. The swimsuit looked terrible. But the, the female's body was on point. It was on like 100 then we seen like a little picture of the pink bathing suit or swimsuit like if you if you having these women try on suits how come we're not seeing this a display of suits we just see shit with plastic on a rack somewhere with covering up with like cardboard or disguise outfits like come on don't waste our time with that just set you could have went to the restaurant and gossiped so anyways basically they get into conversation and you know, Tammy wants Melissa to make up with, you know, uh, Mimi or whatever. So, you know, you know, Melissa was like, yo, you know, I messed up. I came off rude and immature towards Mimi. You know, when she was telling me about um, Adrian saying whatever she said and, you know, about not to fuck with me or whatever, I should have just left it as that. But I threw that in her face. So I owe Mimi an apology and I'm going to make I'm going to make up with Mimi. And so Tammy was like, preferably before Jamaica. And then Melissa goes, no, and Jamaica. And so then Estella walks in and, you know, they're saying hi to Estella, asking Estella questions or whatever. And, you know, so, you know, Carly Red's there. Carly Red don't want to get involved because, you know, Jocelyn told her not to tell her anything about Stevie or what he's doing or who he's doing it with. And, you know, Carly Red doesn't know what to do. She's she's in torment. She's in, she's in self-conflict whether she should run back and tell Jocelyn or not because this is information. She feels like Jocelyn might be mad. She might not. So Carly Red's like, I'm going to keep my mouth closed. But Carly Red makes it known that she's not too appreciative of Estella for no reason. It doesn't even make sense. So, you know, Carly Red was like, mm, um, interesting. Everything, oh, you assigned to Stevie. Interesting, interesting. Basic on anything that, any question that Estella was asked. So basically, you know, Carly Red throws in that she's having a grand opening and she wants all of the ladies to come. Jock is coming, whatever. And she tells the lady she has a surprise for Jock. And it was like, oh, I know you wasn't going to give in that easy with Jock. I know you wasn't going to... I know you wasn't going to just let him have it that easily or whatever. And so Estella asks if she's invited. Carly Red goes, interesting. Then Melissa, then Melissa says, you know what, Estella, she's being rude. I'm going to invite you, okay? You're going to be my date. So, you know, Carly Red says, interesting, <laughs> basically. Carly Red had no reason to come off rude or disrespectful. She just made up with Jocelyn like an hour ago. There's no reason for you to carry 
on any type of situation towards, you know, Estella. But, you know, I think Carly Red is thinking in her head, you know what? New plot line, new plot line, new plot line. So anyways, and so then Estella shows, you know, Rashida that Jocelyn was um, on the rail talking crap about her or whatever. And Rashida was like, everybody's talking about me. Everything is always in the media. Every, you know, she couldn't wait to take a dig at me. And, you know, Melissa says, you know what? It's probably what's hot. And that's why people are talking about it. And if no one was talking about you and Kirk Rashida, you guys won't be on the show. Because right now, this is the interesting you, you guys have never been this interesting. And it's not even that interesting because they keep pushing back y'all plot line with Jasmine and Rod, you know what I mean? And the DNA test. So anyways, so you know, Estella is getting in good with the girls. Let's see if the girls turn on her, turn on her or whatever. So anyways, Estella is doing her thing. She's just chilling. So it is what it is. So we'll find out. What's going to happen with Estella? How's her storyline going to play in this? So we get Tommy and Jock. They, make up, they meet up. To, um, Jock is getting his hair done. Um, Tommy walks in the salon. And she was like, it smells like it smells like an episode of Grease in here. And then, you know, Jock laughs. She laughs or whatever. Basically, they apologize, apologize to each other. They admit it. They didn't both smash. So it is what it is. And so, you know... And so, you know, Tommy, it was, Tommy's like, so how did, you know, Carly Red get to the video shoot? I mean, get to the club, the comedy club, or whatever. And Jock was like, I don't know, the bus maybe? I don't know how she got there. And they both laugh about Carly Red. And then boom, they mended fences. They're all good. Stevie meets up with Estelle doing some pictures. Like same shit he used to do with Jocelyn. Basically, Stevie is not too cool with Estella chilling with the gossip girls of Atlanta because he goes they're fake they're vicious and they'll be ready to turn their back on you in a minute and leave you all hanging there to dry and plus he wants to keep Estella away from Jocelyn so anyways we get Carly Red so but Estella calls you know Carly Red Dusty Water Roach and she was like you know Melissa invited me to Carly event because Carly didn't want to invite me and so Stevie so Stevie says oh Melissa wanted you for a date you better be careful with Melissa because before you know it, you'll be in Melissa's bed and that's true genius from run from run from one scumbag to the next when it comes to getting women so anyway so Kirk meets up with Rashida basically and it is what it is. Rashida's like, Kurt is like, you know, when we were together, when that shit happened between me and Jocelyn, it was like we was married, but we was only married on paper. So you know what I mean? So it's like, so don't come at me, Rashida, with this bullshit. You wasn't fucking with me. And then Rashida was like, you wasn't fucking with me. Basically, home needs to be taken care of first and all that other bullshit. Kurt is seeming like he don't even give a fuck. So basically Rashid is telling Kurt you better get a DNA test next time next time we meet up again make sure you have the results you have the DNA test and then we can have another meeting Kurt is like whatever Rashida has let Kurt walk over her so much that right now even though it's everything is his fault um he's making it like it's her fault and he's just walking right on top of her like he don't want to get the DNA test he don't want to talk about it. he don't give a fuck he's happy living a bachelor's life right now not with his wife and his kids or whatever so, you know, Rashida's like, you know, woe is me. Everywhere I go on the media, social media, everyone's talking about me. Everybody, it's just everything. Instagram, everywhere I turn is something. I, I got to fight this. And Kurt, I know Curtis into his head, bitch, if they wasn't talking about us, we wouldn't be on this show. We making money from doing this. So, you know what? Stay in your lane. So, anyways, moving forward. Then we get Jocelyn. She she meets up with Stevie. And that baby, baby carriage was everything. That black and brown leather baby stroller was everything i mean like that shit was just so beautiful so anyways you know stevie looks good stevie has been taking care of his daughter he looks so good giving his daughter a, a bottle or whatever looking like that big old strong brawly man or whatever but we know how stevie really gets down so anyways they meet up they have a conversation stevie wants to get back with jocelyn he wants her to move in she says no she goes we can't mix business with pleasure and all this other stuff but stevie did tell estella that um that jocelyn is signed to his label but they have he haven't managed to work with her in months or whatever so stevie's trying to get back with jocelyn on that level because because he says you know i know estella don't want me to work with jocelyn but we and her made a lot of bread together we made a lot of money and all that other good stuff but early in the episode stevie does tell estella i made jocelyn a household name and that's what i'm gonna do for you 
So, you know, the bad guy is really the good guy. So it is what it is. And so, um, you know, Jocelyn is keep threatening Stevie that she's going to take Bella to uh, Miami. And Stevie's like, you can take my baby nowhere. And Jocelyn is loving every minute of him. Every, min- every minute of Stevie saying, you ain't taking my baby nowhere. You ain't going nowhere with my baby. My baby stay next to me. Jocelyn's like, well, well I'm going to ask for $20,000 in child support a month. And Stevie goes, I ain't never been scared to go to court. <laughs> so it's just too funny. <laughs> So anyways, um, so it is what it is. We get to call a grand opening. Um, you know, Dime shows up with her new man, introduce them. And then Carly Red shows up with, um, with C's. And then Dime said, who's this? And Carly Red, this is my baby. And Jock is just looking at her like, oh, this fucking bitch played me. She got me or whatever. So it is what it is. And so, but Jock says when he sees Dime, he goes, last time I seen Dime on a double date, um, she had Fetty Wap's ex-girlfriend around her arms. Now she done switched it up and she's with this dude now. So it is what it is. Next episode should be off the chain because, you know, they're going to go to Jamaica. Jock is going to show up in Jamaica. Um, Jasmine, um, ex-boyfriend, is going to meet up with Rashid and say and claim that he's the baby's father. So it's Kurt, right? It's Kurt, not the father. So we'll see what's going on. Please like, subscribe. It'll be greatly appreciated. Peace. I'm out.